Lyme disease is the most common insect-borne disease in the United States. Ha! <laughs> Suck it, malaria! If left undetected and untreated, it causes three stages of disease. So this video will help you become a Lyme recognizing and diagnosing mastermind. Because it's caused by the woods-loving deer tick, Ixodes scapularis, what better place to explore it than with Robin of Ixodes and his merry peoples in Shearwood Forest? However, we won't be in England. No, this Shearwood Forest is located on Cape Cod, that silly little phallus of Massachusetts where vacation-starved New Englanders cram themselves every summer. And if the sharks don't get them, Lyme disease will. Lyme disease is actually caused by the spirochete Borrelia burgdorferi. As I mentioned, these disgusting little modal spiral-shaped bacteria are jammed into humans by the evolutionarily completely friggin' useless Ixodes scapularis. Here's what they look like. From left to right, this is an adult female, male, and nymph. The nymphs are classically compared to poppy seeds in size. I know you can't imagine not noticing that one of these suckers has buried its head in your dermis, but actually, many people will present with signs and symptoms of infection without recalling a tick bite. Often, the tiny devils attach where the sun don't shine and, after transmitting Lyme, fall off and go their merry, creepy way in search of more dermis. I understand that you want to pause the video now and go shower for 45 minutes using a cheese grater as a loofah. Don't worry, we'll wait. All clean? Great. Now let's see where you might be able to become an unwilling and unwitting host for these poppy seeds of Satan's bagel. This map shows where Lyme disease is most prevalent in the U.S. As you can see, it's mostly in the Northeast and Upper Midwest, but there are also cases scattered across the country. So even if you're in part of the country that isn't bathed in ticks like the Northeast, remember to ask about travel history, including Europe and Asia. And ask patients to leave their suitcase outside the exam room. This sign will help you remember that deer ticks are the most likely to throw crazy towny kegas in the Northeast. Wicked pissa. Okay, now we know where patients get it, but how will they present? Well, as we mentioned, infection can cause three stages of disease which present and are managed differently, so we'll cover each in detail. Stage one is called early localized disease. It occurs in the first 30 days after infectious transmission. It can cause malaise, fever, chills, and myalgias. So suspect stage 1 Lyme if a patient presents with a flu-like illness in summer. But be aware that flu and Lyme infections overlap in the spring and fall. But the pathognomonic sign of stage 1 Lyme disease is the infamous erythema migrans, or EM, rash, which appears in about 80% of patients. It's a rounded red area that often, but not always, starts at the site of the tick bite. It's usually painless and rarely itchy. Note that many patients will have a local erythematous reaction to the tick bite itself. You can differentiate this from true EM because EM gradually expands or migrates beyond 5 centimeters in diameter over the course of several days. An important note, EM only sometimes has a central clearing, causing the classic bullseye appearance. Most often, it's diffusely erythematous. Let's check out a few examples. EM is often found in or near the axilla, inguinal region, popliteal fossa, hairline, or belt line. So make your patient get naked, don the goofy gown, and check everywhere. Studies have shown an underdiagnosis of stage 1 and higher rates of disseminated Lyme in patients with darker skin tones. This is due, in part, to physicians lacking training detecting the diverse appearance of erythema migrans. Here you see EM on the thigh of a pale patient where it looks pink, and then in the axilla and popliteal fossa of patients with darker skin where it appears darker than the surrounding skin. But implicit bias can also lead providers to omit Lyme disease from the differential for patients of color. When considering Lyme, our culture leads us to conjure mental images of a pale white UMass student named Scooby Hikerton who climbs Mount Tom in a pair of Birkenstocks to smoke a doobie on the summit. But I live near UMass and trust me, People of all skin tones climb Mount Tom to smoke a doobie. 